Welcome to the Plumes of Oz, where we look at the Australian birds in the wild. And hear that chattering high-pitched call? That is the call of the Scarlet Honey Eater. And here on the coastal ranges of New South Wales in the dense sclerophyll forest, they are having a drink, perching in the trees, preening, and giving rise to a red flash of colour in the green forest. These birds like dense forest. And see that tree that's circled? That is a flowering turpentine. A favourite of the scarlet honey eater. To get close proximity and good photography, we will set up a water dish, hoping that the birds will come down from the canopy to the ground and have a drink. A male scarlet honey eater with a female and there's also a white naped honey eater. Look at that beautiful red head, the red stripe going down the back and the black wing. The female was different being more fawn. This dense forest is the preferred habitat of the scarlet honey eater and we can only find them here in New South Wales in the warmer months. They migrate back north during the cooler periods. Here now is the female. She only has a little bit of red rouge on the cheeks and the forehead and a little bit under the chin. Significant sexual dimorphism. Latham, when he first described this bird, thought that the male and the female were different species. Subsequently corrected by John Gould. So the scarlet honey eater is one of the honey eaters that shows difference between the male and the female, or sexual dimorphism. And this is a common feature to the honey eaters with small fine bills. That is, the red and the black honey eaters. There are exceptions to this rule. For example, the dusky honey eater where the male and the female are inseparable. A fawn bird with a red rump. It's a scarlet honey eater. Is it a juvenile or a female? It has a black bill. The redness on the rump is diagnostic, for it is only present in the male. So this bird, without the red head, is an immature male. However, it can be tricky to get sexual identity in the immature scarlet honey eaters. Apart from the red rump, some clues suggesting that an immature scarlet honey eater is a male include being redder than a little bit of rouge, the wing colour turning to black, and a black bill with the absence of a yellow gape. Earlier, I mentioned that one of the favourite flowers for this bird to feed on is the turpentine blossom. But when it comes to colour, they also have a favourite, and that favourite is red. It's not unusual to see a male scarlet honey eater offer a red petal to its partner. A stand like this of red calistamine is always attractive to the scarlet honey eater. This is on the central coast of New South Wales at a place called Forster. And the red flowers attract this beautiful little red bird. They come and go through these trees taking nectar in flocks, sometimes up to a dozen birds. But as soon as one flock is gone, the second one comes in. And this may be repeated during the day. And in 2023, the springtime has brought a flush of these birds, in contrast to the honey eaters of the drylands where the numbers have dropped off after flood and drought. Now we have photographed at a water point, but the other common place to find these birds is in flowering Australian native trees. Honey eaters belong to the family Malafagidae, merely for honey and fagidae for eating and these birds are addicted to the nectar sugars of native flowers in Australia. In the early 1800s this bird was first described by John Latham but he thought there were several species. He published this by looking at Watling's drawings, never having been to Australia. And from these drawings he thought the male and the female 
were different species of bird. Mizomela comes from two Greek prefixes, mizo or suck, melia, for honey, so suck honey. Very similar to the family name for honey eaters, Melophagidae, or honey eat. Given the Greek genus name Mizomela and the family name Melophagida, you would suspect that these birds only ate nectar, but this isn't quite right. Look at this male scarlet. He's wandering around in the canopy of a shrub, gleaning for insects and arachnids. Now as mentioned, the immature birds often look like a female. But as they come out, into puberty so as to speak, the male birds develop this strong scarlet colour. And here is just a further example of young, immature males. Within the genus Mizomela, we have three honey-eater species, grouped like this because they all have a red colour. If we travel north up into Queensland, there we can find a dusky honey-eater, a red-brown coloured Mizomela, and sexually isomorphic. Then, if we move across the top end of Australia, going over to the Kimberley, the red-headed honey-eater dominates. As the Mizomela have a fine bill, they can go into most flowers and get nectar and pollen. In the tropics and subtropical areas, where fruits and nuts are grown, like this mango orchard in Darwin, the Mizomela are an important pollinator. Another juvenile male. The blush is far more than a blush on the side of the face and under the chin. Just compare it to this bird, which is the classic female. And now a juvenile female with a prominent yellow gape. As mentioned, when Latham described this bird, he did so from the Watling drawings. Now, these are historical drawings of birds. Unfortunately, they have been lost. So the various names that Latham used, unfortunately, I cannot explain. Latham's species name, however, was Sanguinolenta, from the Latin prefix sanguinus for blood and olenta for abundant, and this adequately describes the male scarlet honey eater. And in honour of Latham first doing the written description of this bird, so the species name is continued in its binomial name of Mizomela sanguinolenta. And on this bird you may initially think that it's a female, but see the red stripe going down the back? This is an immature male. Another female. To finish off as the music stops, I will leave you with the typical sonogram of the scarlet honey eaters calling in the bush. There is alternation of the frequency centered at 4 and then 5.8 kilohertz. So this is one of the highest pitched honey eaters in Australia. On behalf of the Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. If you would like to subscribe, you will get automatic notification of new releases of Australian birds in the wild.